power shy away, come to take the throne. To conquer world powers, bring Jake the home. I'm quarterbacking like Jake DeLone. Like Mount Rushmore, I got a face of stone. Hey, but brother right here, the sister, and hey, y'all three right here, right? Y'all got any questions? See y'all interested. Y'all stopped and y'all y'all listen. You want to hear more about it? Okay. Well, the main message, the main message that we're out here, uh, uh, that we're supposed to get across to our people, right? Listen up, brother. Listen up. Are you associate with so-called black, right, brother? Okay. You associate with so-called black, right? You would say that you're black if I asked you what your nationality was. What would you say? Jamaican. Okay. Okay. That, that's okay. Now, pretty much, Jamaicans are seen as so-called black people as well, right? In America, yeah. Right. But they weren't always called Jamaicans, right? They weren't always called uh, 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 pretty much what they are now today. We teach our people who they are according to the Bible. You won't find Jamaican in the Bible. Right? You'll find Israelite, right? And so what we teach our people is that their true nationality is an Israelite according to the Bible, according to prophecy and history, right? Because how Jamaicans got, well, how your people got to Jamaica was through a result of disobeying the Most High God, right? That's how they got there. So that's proof that you're the people that the Most High God was dealing with like that. You know what I'm saying? And pretty much in the time that we're living in, we're supposed to come back to the Most High God. Repent, keep, his, keep the commandments that he gave us. Because that's the reason we're in this situation, because we broke those commandments. Right? This all making sense? Yeah. Right? But don't worry Don't worry about that woman, right? No, nah, I'm not going to worry about it. But I'm listening to you. Okay. <laughs> right? All right, so you're getting the message so far, right? Okay, okay. So what do you think about it? I'm familiar with it. I've done, I've done research. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you say you've been doing your research. What part of New York? You're from Brooklyn. Yeah, you're from Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, we shot, a, um, we shot a little video in Brooklyn about the Barclays. I used to live in, uh, yeah, I used to live in Harlem for a little bit. Okay, so you, I know you've probably seen the Israelites like being in New York all the time, yeah. So yeah, what you, uh, you been enlightened by it or you still like searching for what you're uh, looking for? Um, I, uh, I've been enlightened by it. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying, what you? I've been enlightened for something. Okay, then, what's up, bro? What you you play? What you do like for your profession? Like you play ball? Like you do anything? Nah, right? I play ball, bro. What you? Oh yeah, you look like you like. What's the channel? Like, yeah, nah, I'm a consultant. Oh, you're a consultant. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. Okay, okay, yeah, that's what, that's where everything yeah, going right now. So yeah, that's what we are like. We out here trying to teach our people like they, they God's word. They can do everything, but you just need your base. You gotta have your base with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's what our people need. Give me um Proverbs 16 and 20. I had to teach so-called blacks, Latinos, Native and Central Indians, the chosen people of the Lord, who in the ghettos, you know what I'm saying, in the barrios in New York, you know what I'm saying, going through all type of calamities. You got to bring their mindset and renew it. Watch this, go ahead. Yeah, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and 3. Go ahead. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Yeah, the Bible says, commit thy works unto the Lord. Go ahead. Thy thoughts shall be established. Thy thoughts shall be established. So I'll be telling our people to have the base of the Bible and your thoughts are going to be established. You know what I'm saying? Because without the Lord, everything going to fall down. You know what I'm saying? It can look good for a second, but without that base and that foundation, it ain't going to be nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got to seek wisdom. Give me, um, give me some right um, I know you want wisdom, right? Basically, I know you. I know you a man that want wisdom, right? Yeah, I do. And it's Sirach 6 and 18. My son, gather instruction from that you duck. That's what we try to teach our people. Gather instruction from your you fuck. Get the right instruction. Because for the most part, our people been taught the wicked instruction. You know what I'm saying? We got to get more of the righteous instruction to dictate our life. Then we're going to end up in situations we're not supposed to be in. 
because a lot of situations we end up in because we're not being prudent and not having, you know what I'm saying, the mindset of taking righteous instruction, go ahead. Uh, so shalt thou find wisdom. So shalt thou find wisdom, go ahead. To thy old age. To thy old age. So it's all about getting this wisdom. That's the only, like, that's basically wisdom is likened to a woman in the Bible. So that's the woman we need to be chasing after, you know what I'm saying, for yeah. the most part. Because if you ain't got that wisdom, you're going to drift off into all type of stuff. You ain't going to have be a prudent man. Yeah. You got to be prudent out here. You see how niggas getting killed left and right. Ambidestrous. They get killed left and right. All right. Yeah. So you got to know what you can. Give me Proverbs 22 and 23. The church is also likened to a woman. Church? Okay, okay, you can say that, but the church, according to the Bible, is the Israelites. It's the congregation of the Israelites. Give me Acts 7 and 38. Let me show you that. Let me give you one more. Book of, uh, book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3. A prudent man, prudent man, a man that knows what's going to happen. Know if I do this, this going to happen. Not just thinking out of the You got to think, but a man supposed to think logically. Okay. True. So or see it the evil, and hid it himself, and hide it himself. Who the man for see the evil and hide it himself? You know, now nah. if I go down there, nah. like um, what part of book are you from? Where are you from? Canarsie. Huh? Canarsie. Okay. So I know there's certain parts of book like I ain't gonna go there right now. It ain't prudent for me to go there. You know what I'm saying? So a prudent man for see the evil and hide it himself. Girl. But the simple. Pass on. Simply pass on, man. And are punished. And are punished. So we're trying to get our people that prudence in their mind, but they won't end up in these situations. And that all come with gathering wisdom. But it's good to gather there from the youth fuck. Because a lot of our people falling into bad situations as a youth. Going to, you know what I'm saying, commit crimes as a young child. You know what I'm saying? They ain't ending up messed up as they get older. You know what I'm saying? But watch this, the church. Those are good. Let me show you who the church is, man. Yeah, this is Acts 7 and 38. This is he that was in the church, in the wilderness, in the wilderness right? with the angel who spake to him in Mount Sinai. Yeah, the church that was in the wilderness. Who was in the wilderness with Moses? According to the Bible, then who was in the wilderness with Moses is the Israelites, you know what I'm saying? True. So yeah, we the gods on earth. That, um, Israel means Yahshua Allah, which means he is a prince of the power. So we princes of the most high. So it's, a, it's up for us to come back to the Lord and bring out that godliness that's in, in the inside of us and bring it out. Give me Psalm 82 and 06. What you think about that, bro? I mean, I'm listening, brother. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm still listening. Okay, you get it. Okay, I got you, man. The book of uh, Psalm, chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are God. So the Bible calling the Israelites is saying, ye are God. According to the Bible, the Israelites are gods on earth. Small G, though. Yeah, yeah. small, yeah, small G. Yeah. It's judges. You know, it can go with judges, angels, rulers. rulers. Yeah, yeah, basically rulers on earth. We're not the most high God, but we basically gods on earth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We made in his image. Yeah, we made in his image, God. And all of you are children of the most high. And all of us are children of the most high. So for us to be children of the most high, when you got a child, you got to take correction, and you got to do with, you know, basically with your parents. If they got certain things they want you to do around the house, a certain way of moral compass that you got to follow, you got to follow that or correction going to come with it. So a lot of people, we get corrected for a lot of things. We have, we have backslid and went against the Lord. So now we, that's why we got in this predicament. But now it's time to come back to the Lord so we can get our people out of this predicament, predicament and bring that godliness out so we can be back home. So we can really, it's, it's cool to say we kings on earth, we guys on earth, but we if we not acting and conducting ourselves like that, it don't mean nothing. That's just like if you're playing ball, like if you, Michael Beasley, he got all the potential in the world. But he ain't never just go dumb in the NBA. So it's cool to say, I'm cold, but if you ain't doing it, it don't matter nothing. So that's why we got to start doing it. You know what I'm saying? Give me um, James 1 and 22. You got to be doers of the word. The Lord left us. You know what I'm saying? I did. I did. Yeah, this is the book of James, chapter 1 and 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Yeah, be doers of the word and not hearers only. You can't just be a hearer. You got to actually put, put some type of effort into what you're trying to do. Like if you're trying to be in a consultant, you can't just sit there and be like, oh, I'm just going to, nah, it takes some type of effort you got to put to, you know what I'm saying, bring what you to bring out what you're trying to accomplish, you know what I'm saying? So the same thing with the Heavenly Father. He got basically instruction manual on how we're supposed to conduct ourselves, live our life, certain things we eat, and how we're just supposed to have nobility, which we have fallen from. We've fallen from our first estate, you know what I'm saying? So, so we're trying to get back to this thing. Right? Yeah, obedience, you know what I'm saying? That's basically so, all so, so I got a question you said, certain things you eat. So what do you eat? Um, well, the, um, the lawful foods that the Lord left for us. You know what I'm saying? You know, okay. we just eat pork. 
can't eat nothing if it don't got fins and stuff. But, 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 see, the thing is, back then, those, yeah. those, the Jews, they, uh, they, 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 the meat was all kosher. The meat? So nah. it didn't have any, it didn't have any blood in it. Oh, yeah, no blood in it, yeah, for sure. Like, we don't supposed to eat things with shrimp, with blood in it. Yo, you good? Yeah, yeah, I'm up for it. But kosher is that how they do it now, um, not like that. But as far as, in the Bible, it tells us we can't eat nothing that if it still got blood in it, it got to be well done. It tells us, what's it? Give me Acts 15. Acts 15. So, so you still you still eat fish? Yeah, I eat fish. Do you eat chicken? Yeah, I eat chicken. And beef, pork? Yeah, beef. I eat that. Right. <laughs> no, oh, not you said pork? No, no, beef, not oh, pork. Oh, beef, yeah, I eat beef. But of course, like, you got GMOs, all this crazy stuff. Give me Ezekiel 4. So, so would you not say that, so basically what you're saying, and like prophecy, what I understand about prophecy, like, uh -huh. you're supposed to be transitioning back to the times of like Adam and Eve, right? The time of Adam and Eve. In terms of like our diet and all that, because there's no death in heaven, so you can't eat beef and, pork and chicken and all that fish in heaven, right? Heaven, what you saying? Like, well, heaven is going to be, heaven going to be on earth, though. Heaven is in, the kingdom is inside you. Yeah, but there's not going to be any death. There's going to be our bullshit, huh? Heaven is going to be on earth, yeah, after after the earth is cleansed, fire, and whatever. For sure, but like in the past, we got to eat the land. So we're going to have to eat land. That's that's in the law that we got to do that. So we're going so, to have to eat something. We're going to have to eat meat. So you're saying now, that? If you don't want to eat meat, that's cool. But you're going to have to eat the land. Man. It's on the past, over, but you ain't got to eat meat because the meat now is the foul. We got yeah. GMOs. Well, we're going to have the the lamb of God in front of us. So I understand what you're saying, like, but tradition isn't going to be, there's not going to be any death. So you're saying that there's going to be a dead lamb in front of us that man's going to eat? Yeah, that's in the law. We're going to have to eat the lamb. I don't and think so, like bro. Like even said, who Christ said. Show me, show me that. Show me that there's going to be, there's going to be a Passover in heaven and we're going to eat. Luke 22 and 16. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So we're gonna have that. Yeah, give me until, that law. Give me that until. law. We're gonna have it. That's in the law. Christ said we're gonna have to keep the law. So it's in the law that we gotta eat the land. Nah, bro. I don't know about that one. Yeah, we still you had me. A, a, I was just. Hey, as, as a death, you mean no more death? You mean just humans? You mean everything? Bro, there's gonna be no more death. I mean, I mean, um, I'm asking you to clarify that. Do you mean just humans or do you mean animals too? Bro, this is what I'm saying. Death, period. There's gonna be no death, no pain, suffering, nothing. I, I know, but for so I, I, humans, I, I, whether it's animals, anything. Okay, right. Go ahead and get uh, Isaiah 56. Yeah, Isaiah 56. It's creation. That was Isaiah 56. Uh, what do you want me to start? Uh, verse 7. Uh, he says, I'm going to start at verse 6. Uh, also, the sons of the strangers that join themselves to the Lord. Uh, to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that uh, keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and take a hold of my covenant, uh -huh. even them will I bring to my holy mountain uh -huh, and, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Uh -huh. Their burnt offerings. Their burnt offerings. Yeah. What you saying? Like the burnt offering? But a, you see the, the difference? Hold on. Hey, y'all. What's the point? What's the point of this? The burnt offering, that's, that's an animal. That's an animal. The burnt <laughs> offering is an animal. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The burnt offering, this kingdom connotation, and this an animal. Look. And say, oh, my fault. One more thing. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifice, and sacrifices. So they're going to have to come with an animal sacrifice. Wait, let me hear the context. All right, go. All right, this is, uh, I'm going to start at verse, uh, start from the top of verse 7. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain, holy mountain, back, back when we back in rulership, when the Israelites back in rulership, when Christ ruled. Go ahead. And will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Uh -huh. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. Uh -huh. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Yeah. So this kingdom condemnation. Yeah, but not, but the, that context, that's not talking about heaven, though. 
I'm telling you, heaven on earth. Heaven not gonna we not gonna be brother, floating on no cloud, bro. I understand, I, I understand <laughs> that. I, I'm not I don't have like a fairy tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I know most people got saying, that concept. I'm saying like first of all, even in the Bible it says that just gonna we're gonna be before when Christ comes back, we're going to heaven. Before heaven is on earth, we're going up there for a thousand years, a millennia. Right? No, 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 no. That's gonna be on earth. That's gonna be on earth. Not true, brother. The valley of yeah, that's breaking. Give Look, me, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna have to bring up. I right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you heaven? I thought we're gonna we're gonna be there a thousand huh? years in the sky. You said what? We're gonna rule a thousand years in the sky. In the sky? Well, give me um uh, Revelation ten. I don't think I don't think it's in, in the sky, but. What? Are you Adventist? Yeah. 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 I can tell you. I've studied up here. So you take the Ellen White's words, right? So what? You take you the Ellen White's words. Right? Yeah. 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 Two and degree. I used to be Adventist. And I used to do the same thing, right? Two degree. You understand that, that it was uh, that Paul gave us uh, some instruction or, uh, or told us what was going to happen in the latter days about people that was forbidden to eat meat. This is First Timothy chapter four verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times shall, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving in them which believe and know the truth. You see, so. He says that in the latter but, days, but look, even, even with like some people that forbid to eat meat, why? Because when you go into the history, there's already sects of people that was already uh, basically uh, pushing their veganism or vegetarianism. Or but he says that God commanded those things to be clean. So you know, hey. look, Lord said we need meat. Me like personally, it. bro, I stopped eating meat probably like seven years ago. I used to be a vegan for right. years, man. But I, I started back eating meat once I started eating meat. August, and I don't have nothing against that because I grew up eating whatever I wanted to eat. Really pork, like not pork and not shrimp or lobster and stuff like that, but beef and chicken, curry gold, what, what have you. Uh, regardless though, even the way that they prepared the meat in those days, the Israelites, they still do still no blood in that meat. There's no blood. They cook the blood out. Man, I can I can understand it. Stressed man. out, there's yeah, a I lot of stress hormones. Even 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 with the even with the lamb, right? When they slaughtered the lamb, it was the same way they did it. They rocked the lamb to sleep. They came from behind the lamb, so the lamb didn't even know it was gonna be killed. So the blood was still the blood was still pure. <laughs> so what? Where's that in the Bible where they assassinated the lamb? Like I'm up, I'm up, I'm up the yeah, show, show me that. <laughs> Book of Ezekiel, chapter 4 and verse 13. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat the children of Israel. You hear me, bro? I'm listening, I'm listening. Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. We're going to have defiled bread amongst the Gentiles. We, we got we got it now. Of course, but there ain't no law that said we can't eat meat. So if the Lord said the law, I can eat some meat, I can eat. Why I can't eat the meat? Now, when you think of heaven, you believe in the commandments, right? Bro, it's not about me being Adventist, bro. I don't even, I don't even associate with religion typically because people can use religion to control. That's why we don't believe in religion. So I'm either, not, bro. I'm not really religious in that sense, bro. But I've read my own on my own, bro. 
<laughs> I'm listening because I understand. Yeah, I got what you Like, mean. I believe that we're Israelites. You know what I mean? But so you believe we're certain... Okay, animals will guard the kingdom. Like, it's saying right there we're going to have burnt offerings with animals. In the kingdom con kingdom connotation. Can you read that one more time? Please. Isaiah 56. I got a better one. Give me Jeremiah. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah 33, verse 14. I want to ask him about this. Let me read real quick. Yeah, right there. Yeah, this is a. Let me get it. All right, this is Jeremiah. Jeremiah 33, starting at verse 14. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. So we know that contextually that's talking about the kingdom, right? The kingdom of heaven, right? right. And that, this is the name. So, that part of the year. Right? Yeah, okay, they say in these days. And this is the name wherewith uh, she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, uh, so, for thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offering. To offer what? Burnt offering. That's a burnt offering. How do we go? Read, read that sentence from the beginning. Read again. That burnt offering. Verse 18, neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings yeah. and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. So that, those it says are always neither, happen. neither would they want that. That, that means, that, that, that means, that, that, that means, oh, watch it, watch it, right? We'll read it, we'll read it in other translation. That's just old English. Way that's saying. literally the Wait, just wait, wait, I got you, I got you. Okay. Never more, right? We should just read it in on team. I knew, I knew that was coming anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, bro, we got you. We got you. We got you. Oh, no, wait. No, 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 bro. I got you. I got you. Bro, bro, hey, hey, I'll say, hold on, professor. I got you. Let's read it in another translation. It's Jeremiah 33 in the NLT, starting at verse 17. I don't like other translations, though, personally, but go ahead. Other than the King James Version. But this is what the Lord says. David will have a descendant sitting on the throne of Israel forever. Yeah. And there will always be. There will always be. Levitical priests. The little priest has never been done away with. To offer burnt offerings. Burnt offerings, killing animals. Go ahead. And grain offerings. Yeah. And sacrifices to me. Which is also killing animals again. This is kingdom connotation like you already admitted to. They said in those days, Judah and Israel shall be saved. That's the kingdom of heaven. So if, if there's going to be no more death of the animals, why then are the Levitical priests killing sacrifices? Okay, what's, what's the, he asked what's the a conclusion question. of the whole matter? Hold on. Um, I got to... I got to... I, I gotta hear multiple lines that that kind of. Uh, well, I mean, we read we read four verses yeah. then, into it. You wanna read it again? We can read it again. Read it again. Uh, I'm gonna start at verse uh, 14. Yeah. Jeremiah 33, 14. The day will come. See, see, this is the thing. Could you read the King James? Well, well I mean, okay, one more time, one more time, one more time. So I read again. That was that was NLT. Because the, the, the whole reason I had it read in the NLT is because you have King's English, you have like old time English. They said never won. It's really saying that there'll always be. That's 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 the that's a modern day translation of he'll never want this. He'll never have to want that because it'll always be one. That's why we had it read in the NLT. It's Jeremiah 33 and 14. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised. But, uh, yeah, verse 17. But thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Because there always be one. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings. There will always be a Levitical priest on the practicing his office as a Levitical priest. And to kindle meat offerings. Oh. And neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings. 
Sacrifices and burnt offerings as killing an animal. We see that in the, in the, in the, in the Leviticus. So why are animals dying in the end? And what you would say the kingdom of heaven? While Christ is ruling. Why is that happening? If there's no more death for them. I mean, I can give you the answer. That means no more death for us, not, not animals. But that's not what the Bible says. That's, that is what it, the Bible look, says. That's all, that's all the conclusion you come right. to. Read for me Revelation 21, verse 4. Okay, go ahead. You said 21 what? 21 verse 4. Yeah. There's Revelation 20 verse 4. And I saw... 21. 21. Oh, 21. 21 verse 4. Revelation 21 and 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay, all tears from their eyes. Who is that? I don't say, but who, who, who's, who's tears are those? I see those human tears. Now, I mean, okay, who's that's, no, that's human? Ahead, no, 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 no. We're going to read it. I'm not going to run away from it at all. I'm just saying, who, uh, contextually, whose tears is that? That's us, right? That's humans, right? That's humans. Go ahead. Uh, uh, says, Verse 4, he says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. What? Death. Yeah. Neither sorrow yeah. nor cry. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he said, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. So where do you get where do you get that talking about animals? That's, that, bro, that's talking about humans. All right, so look, I have a question. Wait, hey, hold on, wait, no, we can't jump in. How many, many, how many of y'all have ever killed hold an animal? Hold up, hold up, like, no, wait, no, wait, no, 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 Killing an animal. That doesn't matter. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. No, I'm saying because look, look, man. When we, when we read the Bible, we have to deal with the context of what it's talking about. Read it again. Read it again. That's why I asked you the question I asked you. And that's why I'm time. saying that. You got, that's a that's a definitive Revelation thing, 21 and 4. No more death. God is shall wipe bro. away all tears from their eyes. All tears from their eyes, bro. Who is that? Their eyes. There. That's talking about the animals. We will wipe away the tears of the animals now. That's what I'm saying. We gotta, we gotta, come on, man. We gotta, animal we gotta cry, read, by, read the way. Competition. by the way, animals okay. cry. Come on now. You know that. Come on now. You know animals cry, right? Bro, come on. Man. You think that's what he's talking look, about? I'm and, not, and look. Let's, just say, and let's think about this, bro. Let's think about this thing. If that means the animals too, that's a contradiction to Jeremiah 23 and Isaiah 56 and the rest of the rest of Ezekiel uh, past 40, where it talks about kingdom connotation, where the Levitical priests kill anim kill animals. So I mean. That, that, if, if that believe, if that means what you said believes the Bible's contradicting itself, hard. Yo, look, man. I tell you this. I mean, you have to deal with that, though. You have, look, but you have to deal with that, though. Bro, look, we reasoning, bro. So I know we. Fine, look. Okay, look, I get you. Look, you, you, look. you reasoning, though. But you saying that that literally means uh, in Revelation chapter twenty-one, you're saying that's talking about the animals too. Then why do we see kingdom connotation with Jeremiah? Saying the Levitical priest will kill animals. Why does it say that? That's not what it said, bro. He said he won't want that to happen continually. That's what it said. Bro, that's what it said, bro. That's what it said. That's not what it said. He said he doesn't want that to happen continually. That's what he said. He said he wants that. He said he shall never, shall never want that. That means they'll never have to look for it because it'll always be there. That's why I read an NLT where it said you know, that he you know the know why it will always be there? Because Christ is going to be sitting on the throne. He's yeah, the and man. it also said Levitical He's the priest. Man that, that and it also said Levitical priest will be on the practicing the, the Levitical the office of a Levitical priest. And they're going to be killing animals. No, they're going to be a living testament to the land. But why does it say that? Though. Why, look, why it does it say said, Look, it said they will not want to continue. That's and it, what and I it said they will not want to. Read it again. Just read it again. Matter of fact, read, read, read that again. Read that again. Find another Jeremiah. witness. Can you say that's what never will, right? No, we're all still everybody chill out. Chill out. Find a yeah. second witness. Get that Ezekiel. Get that Ezekiel. Go ahead. Jeremiah 33 and 17. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man. To Yo, sit upon the throne. So what does that mean? So so never want the no, 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 no. You question. said there's so never one Levitical priest, but now this for some reason they want they want somebody else sitting on the throne. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna kill the uh who's gonna kill the the, the lamb and the meat and stuff like that? The, priest? the Levites. Like the law prescribes. That's that's who's gonna do it. It said that it literally says it in English, bro. Give that give that a seat. Book of Ezekiel. 
chapter 46 and verse 3. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before the Lord in the Sabbaths and in the new moons. Verse 4. And the burnt offering. What? The burnt offering. In no connotation. It's going to be a burnt offering. Go ahead. That the prince shall offer unto the Lord in the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish. That's animals. That's animals in the kingdom getting killed and for a burnt offering, bro. Keep going. There's more. There's more. And a ram without blemish. And a ram without blemish. So why is that happening in the kingdom of heaven if the animals aren't going to die? How, how, do we do, how do we deal with this? I'm, I'm just, how, you don't got to be proud. You can, you can just say you're wrong, bro. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude when I say it, but you nah, got to bro, submit. There's no, there's no pride, bro. I'm okay with being wrong. Okay, cool, man. I'm, I'm still listening. It could be a little bit of cognitive distance. I'm listening. Okay, okay. Okay, then. Is there more? Is there more? Okay. And verse 5. Uh, and the meat offering shall be an ephah for a ram, and the meat offering for the lambs, as he shall be able to give. And and him, that's like and in him of oil to an ephah. That's that's pretty much something. Go back to Isaiah 56 real fast. This is the part we we skip though. Okay. Isaiah 56 verse seven. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Yeah, it's holy mountain. That's also talking about the kingdom of heaven when we get the temple back and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offering. Their burnt offerings that the animals are going to be sacrificed. And their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And you know that's kingdom connotation because we don't have that now. We don't have that altar now. We don't have that. We don't have that house of prayer now. That's that's not here. That means it's going to be built in the future. Showing it's not, this it's future not literal. Though, it, is. it is literal. No, that, that, that's literally what happened. If if you're looking at it from like types and prophecy and literal like. Obviously, right now there's no, there's not that like yeah. a house, of, a literal house of prayer, but yeah. we still have a house of prayer. Almost, well, you can say spiritually, because we are the temple spiritually, yeah. but there will be in the future, in, yeah. the, in the kingdom of heaven, a temple. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, this Hosea chapter uh, three and four. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, yeah. and without a sacrifice, without a what? and without a sacrifice, yeah. and without an image, and without an ephod, and without terrible. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. In the latter days. That's, and that's what's going to happen in the latter days, my brother. Like, so, we're, we're in the latter days. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is talking about another specific latter days. I mean, we, we all coming back to the Lord, but like, it's talking about us fully returning as a nation under Christ. So, what was it? What's that we dealing with outside of the, the sacrifices? Oh, oh, yeah, I meant to ask you about that. You know, uh, you said do you deal with the Hebrew. Oh, you talking about going back to the actual Hebrew translation of what the Bible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, to try to like figure out what it, the context is. Do you understand like the Hebrew, Hebrew, uh, Hebraic, uh, Hebraic context for heaven? Because there's multiple ones. Like you can have you can have heaven. Like as you look up in the sky, they just say that's heaven. Then the second one could be like you being in a rulership. That's in, that's one in the high places. And the third heaven is, is where the most high lives or existing. I wasn't yeah. really existing. So when it says when you're talking about the kingdom of heaven, you really gotta kind of you gotta like elaborate a little bit more because there's multiple different definitions for heaven and life. Especially, like it even says, like in Deuteronomy 30, Deuteronomy 30. Yeah, this is Deuteronomy 30 and 4. If any of thine be driven into the utmost, uh, the yeah, outmost parts of heaven, all parts of you get driven to the outmost parts of heaven. See, Christians like to say that, like, uh, heaven is automatically in the, 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 like, up there where the most high is, specifically only. But this it could also mean, like, like out there, just just out there, bro. Like the, in the Hebrew context, it literally means just out there, where like a type of rulership, or where the Most High actually is. Now that's that's saying that's not specifically saying where the Most High actually is, because it's saying we're going to be delivered from this this place. It says, um, if any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will He fetch thee, and the Lord thy God will bring thee. Into the land whither thy fathers possessed, 
and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And that's really the kingdom of heaven being established. Us being we were driven out, the diaspora of Israel. When we get gathered and brought back into the land of Israel, that's us getting our kingdom of heaven. That's when we get our rulership. That's when we will build the rule of the world. Second Samuel 18 and 9. And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak. So this man, he was by the mule with his head in the tree, it says, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth. So he was just dangling between and his head, so heaven and earth. And the mule that was under him went away. So his head was just hanging on the tree. But the Bible says he was between yeah, the heaven context, and the earth. That's why context, context is important. Yeah. That, that's, that's, really, that's really how you understand Hebrew anyway. Because yeah. the one Hebrew word can mean completely different things depending on the, the context. I feel like that's how you understand any language. We yeah. 100%. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But, uh, it sounds like what's back? I mean, we've been still dealing with it.